Hello and welcome to the Super Mini 4K Media PC build tutorial. I'll go over the components as we build and let's start at the beginning with the motherboard. It's the Gigabyte A520 IAC MITX board which packs a good variety of features including Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, plenty of I.O, an NVMe slot for our SSD and more importantly 4K 60Hz HDMI output. Now first of all let's use our box as a non-conductive base for our build and install our RAM. We went with the Corsair Vengeance 16GB 3000MHz kit for a couple of reasons. The CPU we'll be using caps out at 3200MHz anyway and the difference between the two is very little in performance but quite substantial in price. For our boot drive we've gone with a 408GB Western Digital SN350 NVMe SSD. It's plenty fast enough for this type of build and capacity for this use case isn't much of a concern. Installation is just a matter of one screw. Pop the screw out, pop the drive in, screw it back down and rob it your father's brother. Easy. Now since we'll be using the stock heatsink with our CPU, we need to remove the standard CPU cooler mounting hardware. Just take out the four screws and put them somewhere safe for now. Come on, get it out, get it out, there you go. Like director's commentary on me unscrewing a thing from a motherboard. And now for the daddy of the build, the CPU itself, the AMD 4600G. The G presumably means graphics, as in integrated Radeon graphics. <laughs> Whatever that means. The reason we chose this CPU is a good core count, 6 cores and 12 threads, a highest clock speed at 4.2 GHz at boost, and a TDP of only 65 watts. And all jokes aside, the integrated graphics are actually not that bad. Now, when installing the CPU, look for the gold triangle on the CPU and line it up with the one on the CPU tray. Lift the tension arm, drop in the CPU, bring down the tension arm and lock in the CPU. And you can give it a little jostle just to make sure that it's locked in place. Here is the stock AMD cooler. These do come with thermal compound pre-applied, which is fine, but today I will be using the Noctuware NTH1 compound instead. Squeeze a bit on, not too much, less is probably better than too much. Here you'll see the first problem with the MITX form factor. The cooler shroud interferes with the RAM. So we're just gonna spin it the other way. More on that later. Lock down the CPU cooler, starting with a cross pattern, then screw in all four tightly as far as they will go. Don't try to over tighten them though. Then thread the cable, plug in the fan to the motherboard, and the computer is now basically done. Congratulations, bro. Good job. Now for the box. Here's the box. Let's now open the box. And the case is absolutely tiny. I have pre-cable managed this by zip tying the slack to the frame and routed the cables where they need to eventually be. Here's the 24 pin power, the four pin CPU, which is less than the motherboard can take, but enough at this build. And the HD audio and the front panel USB. Before you think about dropping in the motherboard, you should clear some space in the case and absolutely connect the power switch and the power LED cables to the motherboard or you'll have absolutely no chance once it's in. This is the most fiddly part of the build and you may need to refer to your motherboard's manual to know which pin is which. Top tip, the little arrow on the cable is your positive and the other is your negative. Now let's get these suckers in and move on with our lives. Oh look at that, fantastic. Now for the unenviable task of squeezing this thing into the case. Now it's tight, but it will go. And once we're in, pop in that 24 pin cable, which when it's already been cable managed can be a little bit awkward. And then your four pin CPU connector, which ends up right in the corner of this case and is very troublesome. But at least you only have to do this once, in theory. Tidy up your cables, pop in your HD audio and front USB. Now we can screw this thing down. Just four screws are needed for the MITX, so you might as well do them all. Oh, and look, and as if by magic, they're all done. Now just pop on the lid and we're good to go. Oh, oh no. We can't, the shroud is in the way, again. Ugh. Now, it will just pop off, but bear in mind that there is a single screw holding it in place. And there, as if by magic, the lid now fits. Fantastic. Quick plug in to see if we power on, as if I haven't already tested this entire system before shooting this video. And way. Now we've pre-installed Windows and updated the BIOS to the latest version. So all we need to do now is enable XMP for the RAM. 
go into the integrated graphics settings and give it a full two gigabytes of RAM to play with rather than the stock 512 megabytes. And I also like to disable the cool and quiet because it's actually a really quiet system anyway, and I don't want to hinder performance. And now we're all built, we're ready to go, we're ready to do some work. Oh, oh, this appears to be um, Rocket League. Um, 1080p, 60 frames a second. GG, too easy, well played. Also streaming 4K video is an absolute breeze. An underload, this thing only pulls a total of 108 watts. For something smaller than a bottle of Coke, that could be mounted on the back of a monitor or a TV. This thing is pretty fantastic. So why not build your own MITx computer? And if you do, well, now you've got the perfect guide to show you how to do it. Probably, maybe. I don't know. Thank you for watching. Take care, and I'll see you again soon.